What's up everybody, JJ Buckets here, and you already know, it is time to talk basketball. Two seconds, Trent drills it for the win! Now, I feel like it's actually been a little while since I've done one of these proper sit-down videos, but today, for the video, it is going to be me discussing draft scenarios for the Raptors for this uh, upcoming offseason. Now, obviously, this Raptors season has been turbulent, and it can still take a lot of different directions into where it goes. So I'm going to explore most of those. I'm going to explore scenarios where both the Raptors, you know, end up in the playoffs somehow, well, by the play-in tournament most likely, or scenarios where they, you know, fully commit to the tank and they end up like high in the lottery. And just look at some of the prospects that the Raptors should be considering in my mind that could really turn this team around and give them that little extra piece or two to really put them back to being a competent, consistent playoff team. So without further ado, let's hop into the video. So at the time of this recording, and this will be dated by the time that this video comes out, but nonetheless, the Raptors are currently 11th in the Eastern Conference and have the 8th worst record in the NBA, which in theory would put them in a good position in the lottery. They're going to have a matchup, you know, as of this being recorded tonight with the Chicago Bulls that I think will really dictate the direction that this team goes moving forward. I know Nick Nurse has come out and talked about the fact that they want to compete and the playoffs are something on the Raptors mind. So it's not like they're going to be holding back. It's not like they're going to be out there intentionally trying to lose games. Quite the opposite. Like I do think this team will try everything in their power to be a playoff team. I've been on record before saying that in a season like this one with the draft as loaded as it is, that is the wrong approach. And I hate to say it, but anyways. That's obviously completely out of my hands. That's up to the team and up to everybody there as to what they're gonna do. But as of now, the Raptors' intent is to stay competitive. I think this matchup with the Bulls will go a long way to see seeing where this team ends up because the Bulls currently, I believe, have two games up on the Raptors in the standings. Obviously, should the Raptors win, they close that down to one game. But nonetheless, they're stuck in this position where they're like, it's, it's so weird. The Raptors could easily drop down and, you know, get worse records than some of the teams behind them. Like, teams like the Cavaliers and teams like the Wizards are still in great positions to potentially jump the Raptors in terms of record, which I, like I said, I think is for the best personally regarding this team. But they're also in a position where they could easily get themselves into the play-in tournament. So, it's basically my whole point of this is... This season is going to go one of two ways going forward. Either the Raptors are going to fight their way into the play-in tournament and potentially into the playoffs, or the Raptors could keep dipping and could actually end up with some really high lottery odds and potential to be drafting, say, as high as, well, hell, as high as number one, <laughs> depending on how the balls drop uh, when it comes to the lottery. So, there's going to be a lot of scenarios to explore here. The other thing that makes this weird for them is the, I'd say the construction of their roster currently. They already have a lot of competent pieces and some of the spots that there's actually a lot of talent in this draft. Say you already have Freddie for the future at your point guard spot going forward, which kind of makes it weird if you want to draft somebody, say like Jalen Suggs, um, which spoiler if he's not gonna be in here <laughs> you have guys like OG that you know is just such a natural fit to the three spot you have obviously Pascal Siakam and you just acquired Gary Trent Jr. so other than the obvious hole on the Raptors at the center position there's not really a lot of different spots that the Raptors you know have a like strong need at but at that point, you can debate whether or not drafting the best available player really is the best move for this team. Or, you know, you obviously explore the ideas of, okay, if we draft this guy that, say, plays the three naturally or plays the two naturally, how can we move around this lineup to potentially slide guys over? Is Pascal Siakam staying at the five something that this team wants to explore, which, you know, is up for the debate obviously that would still kind of leave a rebounding hole on this team which is not really enviable for them going forward but at the same time 
who knows, depending on who you draft, say, that plays the three spot or the two spot. Maybe they're like an elite rebounding guard or something of the sort, which gives you a little bit of ease in terms of your head where you're like, okay, cool. We're playing Pascal at the five and our rebounding has been an issue, but at the same time, we're drafting an elite rebounder at the two guard position. So we don't feel as bad about it. There's only one obvious need for the Raptors in this draft and it is the center position, but that shouldn't stop them from exploring other avenues and potentially playing around with the lineup and who starts where. Basically, keep your options open. <laughs> That's all I'm saying here that is what I think the best approach is for the Raptors. So let's get into one of three scenarios for the Raptors that I think they should be looking at. Obviously the three scenarios here are gonna be either they're incredibly high up in the draft, potentially number one, number two, number three, we'll look at that. We're gonna look at the scenario where, you know, they keep a spot similar to where they are now and they're drafting around like eight, seven, something like that. Or we're gonna look at the scenario where they sneak into the playoffs and they're gonna have a later pick and who they should be looking at in those, you know, kind of mid-tier first round picks. We're gonna start by looking at the prospects in the scenario where if the Raptors end up near the top of the draft, I'm gonna get the obvious one out of the way, Kate Cunningham, right? Kate Cunningham is a fit on every team. It doesn't matter what your lineup, what your squad looks like. If you have a chance to go take Cade Cunningham, you are absolutely doing it. Cade Cunningham, I think it speaks a lot onto him that in a draft as good as the one that's being projected for this year, Cade Cunningham has unwaveringly all year, and obviously even before the year, even before this draft class rolled around, he has consistently stayed at the top of all mock drafts, of all leaderboards, as the number one prospect in this draft. And I really do think that's the case. I think Cade is potentially a transcendent talent, somebody that can really lead your franchise for the foreseeable future. And if the Raptors are in a position to take him, if they somehow luck out and end up in the number one pick, that is absolutely who you should be taking. Cade Cunningham is a fantastic scorer. A lot of people compare him to like a Luka Light. And I kind of like that comparison. The thing I would say with Cade, though, is he might be a better defender already than Luka. And I think that bodes well for the Raptors, who obviously love playing good defenders. Um, and I think that speaks a lot onto Cade's game that, hey, don't get me wrong, he might not fully be, you know, Luka offensively, but defensively, he might be steps ahead of him, which kind of bounces out. Uh, <laughs> And obviously, it solves a need for the Raptors where you get a potential closer for this team and you really get a guy to build around properly. With Cade especially, again, like for, for the spot that he's going to be playing, he's a good rebounder, which does help a team need, even if it doesn't address the center position like I was previously talking about. I think Cade like I said, fits on any team. With the Raptors specifically, I think what you'd be looking at is Cade slotting into probably the two with Freddie at the one, uh, Trent at the three, OG at the four, and Pascal remains at the five. I think that is a formidable lineup going forward. And God, like he, he could really, I, like I just, I gush at the idea of Cade Cunningham on this team. I really do. If we're talking about filling the need though, I don't think there's a more obvious prospect in this draft that, you know, just fits right into the Raptors team than Evan Mobley. And God, just picturing Mobley in a Raptors jersey would be super fun. He's a fantastic player. He's incredibly lengthy. He's obviously a seven footer. He's just, he would immediately help the rebounding on the Raptors team. He's also a great defensive presence down low. He's a great shot blocker. If I'm not mistaken, he's averaged over three blocks a game in the NCAA playing for USC this season, which is incredibly impressive. There are some concerns though from people that I've heard about, okay, well, he might be a seven footer, but you want him to play the five in the NBA when he's like incredibly light for a seven footer. And by that, I mean, I think he's around 250 pounds, I believe is what his draft profile says. And to those kind of like remarks slash pundits that would be concerned about that, 
I just want to remind you that this is still a quote-unquote kid that is filling out his, you know, adult frame. He still has more than enough time to bulk up and to, you know, make a healthy jump to a more sustainable NBA weight. Look at somebody like Giannis Antetokounmpo that was a gangly, like, long and, like, thin kid that came into the NBA and now he's a truck and just monster of a human being. So I don't really see that as big of an issue and I think again like you do have to keep in mind that these guys are still fairly young and have so much time to fill out their frames. I think he's just the most natural fit for the Raptors in this draft and should they be high enough or should they be in a position where they can trade up to get Evan Mobley? It honestly might be the best route available in this draft for the Raptors. So next guy I want to talk about is somebody that honestly could be available for the Raptors, whether they're picking kind of, you know, where they would be now in theory around like the eighth spot or potentially even later because he's sliding down draft boards because of character concerns, which I think is so stupid, but it's Jalen Johnson. Jalen Johnson is quietly one of my favorite prospects in this draft and a lot of, you know, draft experts, pundits, whatever, you know, don't like Jalen Johnson because he opted out of the Duke season to go prepare for the NBA draft and for a professional career. And I, I just, I find that so stupid because it's like, hey, here's this uh, young adult who's being exploited by the NCAA for free labor and you know, he's just like, cool, I've done my due diligence here, you know, to showcase for uh, for the NBA for what I really want to be doing <laughs> and for my professional career, I'm going to opt out and just not be exploited. <laughs> and people are like, oh no, character issues. And I'm just like, okay, that's dumb. But anyways, why I like Jalen Johnson so much his long frame just complements his game tremendously. I think Jalen Johnson has the potential to be an elite defender at the NBA level, almost out of the gate, which I think is really impressive and not something you see every day. I think, you know, his wingspan and his gifts on the defensive end, like his instincts for that end as well. Like, I think that's something that can immediately transfer over to the NBA. I think he's a good playmaker as well, and he's a good rebounder as well, thanks to that wingspan. He just, he has so many natural, you know, positive qualities that I think could serve the Raptors really well. I think you could easily slide this guy in at like one of the wing spots and continue to play Pascal at the five and feel reasonably comfortable about the fact that he's gonna solve a lot of team issues for you. Maybe he's not the quote-unquote closer that this team is looking for in terms of that issue, but at the same time, I think Jalen Johnson, you know, fits so many needs for this Raptors team. I think he also just plays a game that naturally complements what the Raptors are trying to do, and I think this would be a guy that I would, I would be tremendously excited to see on the Raptors team. I have one more name to throw out there, and it's a scenario where the Raptors are going to be picking you know, later in terms of they sneak into the playoffs and they're not a lottery team and he's potentially still on the board or they trade up a, you know, a few spots to go get this guy because he fills a need. And I'm going to preface this with an apology in advance that I'm probably going to butcher this name and I feel horrible for doing it, but Alperan Schengen. <laughs> Um, he's an international currently playing in um, the Turkish league and he's posting some gaudy numbers. If I remember them correctly off the top of my head, it's around 25 points per game, upwards of 11 rebounds a game, and around two blocks per game. He is an exciting prospect. And Europe, not Europe, sorry, the international game uh, in general has found success, I would say, in the NBA of late when the NBA kind of like had their change in uh, the philosophy of how the game is played. Shout out Steph Curry. Um, I think he has such a prototypical build as well. 6'10", 240 pounds. He slots right into the center position for the Raptors and he has just, I think, a lot of upside in the NBA. I think, again, I think this is a hand-in-glove fit and if the Raptors 
have intentions of being competitive and fighting into the playoffs and they end up getting there or they end up getting into the playing tournament so they end up slipping a few spots i think this is a perfect guy to be looking at around kind of that middle of the draft slash maybe a little bit closer still to the front of the draft but obviously yeah, around the middle of the draft i think this is a prospect that could really fit nicely with the raptors and i would strongly suggest to go look at the tape for this guy he is he is a fun watch <laughs> so what do you folks think did i miss somebody that you guys just absolutely love as a draft prospect i know there's a lot of guys i didn't mention here that i personally really love watching play like a guy like jonathan kuminga guy like jalen green i really enjoy watching both of those guys so if there's a prospect that you really think I'm missing out on here, comment below, let me know who you who it is, and let me know why you think they'd be a great fit with this Raptors team. Other than that, folks, you know the usual drill. Like the video, it helps it be more seen, and it's greatly appreciated when you folks do it. And if you're new here, subscribe to the channel as well. I'd love to have you coming back to see all the latest videos I'm posting. And other than that, folks, that does it for me today, and I am out of here.